Welcome to Beyond Caladasia, the official internet television show of Legends of Caladasia. I'm Jason, the creator of the game. Now back at Wintercon 2010, I ran the second part of the battle for Min-X4, in which I created a custom battlefield from scratch for this icy planet. So today I thought I'd show you an overview of the build process, just in case you wanted to go ahead and build your own version of Min-X4. Now of course with all build projects, you want to take appropriate safety precautions, and of course attempt these things at your own risk. The battlefield was built from two 4 foot by 3 foot sheets of 1 inch thick extruded polystyrene. This is the pink insulation foam which can be purchased from home improvement stores. The first features I built were the canyon and the areas of exposed rock. First I traced the shape of the regions using a pen. Then with a hobby knife I cut a very fine crisscross pattern across the regions. The cuts were as deep as I wanted the regions to be. And as a note, when working with a knife, always wear safety goggles, and when working with extruded polystyrene, I wear a dust mask and gloves. Once the crisscross pattern has been completed, I took a flathead screwdriver and used it to pry out the individual pieces of the region. This will give a roughly flat area. Lift up the polystyrene and shake off all the loose pieces. Using a file or similar tool, smooth out the depressed areas even more. As an artistic choice, I chose not to completely flatten the surface. Instead, I left a little bit of texture behind. Before painting, I wanted to create the illusion of cracked ice patches on the surface. I mixed up some plaster and poured it onto the extruded polystyrene. With the help of a plastic knife, I spread out the plaster into a thin layer around 1 8 inch thick. While you are waiting for the plaster to dry, it is a great time to clean up all the pieces of extruded polystyrene. Painting the extruded polystyrene can be difficult because many types of paints will not coat it well. For this type of surface, you want to use a white gesso. Gesso is a special type of paint which adheres to porous surfaces quite well. So go ahead and cover the entire surface with white gesso. To create the cracks in the plaster ice, I used a hobby knife and I cut cracks into the plaster. Try not to cut all the way down to the extruded polystyrene though. To paint the areas of exposed rock, I used watercolor paints. The reason for using watercolor paints was twofold. First, it is easy to get a variety of shades with watercolors, and second, the liquid nature of the watercolors will cause the paint to collect in the recesses, leaving the tips of the rock white. Minix 4 is a geologically active planet, and where magma flows close to the surface, liquid water can be found just below the ice covering the planet. To create this effect, I used several shades of blue watercolors to paint the channels. Next, to give the look of ice over the channels, I applied a light layer of white spray paint over the surface of the blue paint. Now there are some more details involved in the process of building the Minix 4 battlefield, but those details are outside the scope of the video. Well, there you go. That's a quick overview of the build process for the Minix 4 battlefield. Maybe sometime in the future I'll go back and talk about some more details, but right now, that's all we have time for. As for the outcome of this scenario, the Irrigal Empire actually won this one. It's the first time they've won a convention scenario, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, essentially what happened is the Surakari fleet broke itself into two parts. One part tried to go for one of the hangars, but unfortunately they didn't have enough firepower to break through the hangar by the time the transports were ready to launch anyway. And the second part of the fleet actually got tied up by a very small portion of the Aragul Empire fleet. This allowed some concentration of fire to go on, and the Aragul Empire managed to do enough damage to the Surikari forces to force them to actually retreat from the battle. Well, effectively retreat from the battle by the time the time limit is up, but anyway, regardless. In the end, all four of the Aragul Empire transports made off the planet, and they scored a very solid major victory. So with that, now i got to rewrite some of the portions of the history of the battle for the Minix system, but hey, that's why I run these convention scenarios, because it was fun to see what would happen. So with that, if you have any questions or comments, if you want to buy a copy of the game or the figures, which are now available, and or if you just want to sign up for our email mailing list, head on over to the game's website at kaladasia.com. That's K-A-L-I-D-A-S-I-A.com. Once again, I'm Jason. Thanks for watching. <laughs>